Today we will discuss about the biomechanical considerations in the removal of partial dentures. So our goal for the removal of partial dentures is actually to provide it a stable prosthesis with function. When we design the removal of partial dentures, they are intended to be able to place into and removed from the tooth. Because of these characteristics, they cannot be rigid connected to the tooth or the tissue. Because they are not able to be connected rigidly to the tooth or the tissue, they will have some potential movement. And those potential movements under the functional load is critical to providing the best chance for stability and the patient accommodations. When the removal partial dentures have some potential movements, you will provide some stress. Those stress will be over the tooth or the tissues and should not be existed the level of physiological tolerance. In physics, then we know the machine can be divided into six different simple machine type. And the RPD, removal partial denture, is a lever. So the lever means that we will have a load and effort and between the fulcrum point. So what's the fulcrum means? The fulcrum is the point on which a lever rests or is supported and on its pivots. The support point of the liver is called the fulcrum. So followed by the different relationship between the force to the fulcrum, then we can divide it those into three different lever types, class one, class two, and class three. For example, if you have a distal extensions, removal partial dentures, when we chew the food, the posterior part of the removal partial dentures will moving down. So this will be considered the class one lever. If a removal partial denture is between the tooth, we have anterior posterior rest. When you chewing the sticky food, this one try to dislodge. And you can see this is considered as class two liver. When the patient wear the upper maxillary removal partial dentures on the distal extensions, we will have a gravity. When the gravity happens, then they will have class 3 levers. So you can see from class 1 to class 3 lever, they all happen in different situations for the removal partial dentures. So in general, the direct retainer is to provide a resistance, and the occlusal rest seat is to be the fulcrum. And the force, some force is coming from the occlusal, maybe from the chewing, and some is from the gravity. They are the load. So followed by those three different type and relationship, you will divide it, those situation into three different level type. So what's the force on the removal partial dentures? The first two is the vertical. So when the denture try to dislodge, actually they will be they will need the retention. However, when the denture be seating or be under the chewing functions, they will need the support. However, when we have a lateral movement or the partial dentures rotations happens, then they will become the horizontal. So they will need the stability. So what's the component's role to provide those three different types of force? For retentions, it's definitely from direct retainer. An indirect retainer will be the add to the direct retainer to provide some retentions. However, the real retention still will be just from the direct retainer, not the indirect retainer. And the rest major connector and the denture base will provide the support. For the stabilities, you will have minor connectors, proximal plates, rigid portion of direct retainer, 
rest, dental base, and major connector to provide stability. So you can see some components may be provide more than one different functions in the removal partial dentures. That's why you need to know for each different component's function and then to design it properly. So let's talk about the focal line first. So why we need to know the focal line? Because we know the removal partial dentures actually can rotate it internally. And when will the removal partial dentures rotate it? For the two supported removal partial dentures, because it was supported by the tooth in the front and the back. So actually this type of removal partial dentures almost cannot rotate it. However, we have a tissue supported removable partial dentures. It means that we have distal extension removable partial dentures. So we only have anterior teeth to support it. However, in the posterior, that's a soft tissue. The soft tissue is more mobile than the tooth. So eventually, this tissue supported removable partial dentures will able to rotate it. When it rotated, it actually is follow an imagery line. Those imagery line around which a removable partial denture tend to rotate is called focal line. Those focal line locations actually is between the two most posterior rest. So that's very important. You have to know where is the focal line. The focal line is a line between the two most posterior rest. Only for the rest. So it will rotate it to the distal or to the back during the chewing and to the mesial or to the front when the sticking foot try to pull the removal part of dentures out. So when we think about the rotation of the removal part of dentures, actually it comes out some concept that we really need to be concerned. So if a rigid element of a removal part of dentures contacting a bum and tooth is occlusal to the cervelli, it will create the torquing force during the occlusal load. Even the flexible elements they are engaging into the undercut area also will result the torquing force during occlusal loading. So when the removal part of the dentures rotations happens, actually those elements of the removal part of the dentures will provide a torquing force to the tooth. So that's why it's so important when we design a clasp and evaluation the component should be followed identification for the focal line to prevent the overloading to the tooth. So remember in the first uh, class I talked about the seesaw. So when we have a distal extension remove partial dentures, it's kind of like a seesaw. So why and when we need indirect retainer? So think about that. When we chew in the sticky food, it's kind of like someone in the posterior try to lift or try to remove this removable part of dentures out of the mouth. So on the focal area, there will be the holder that will be formed or be provided by the direct retainer. However, if we don't have anything in the front to be a supporter, then the direct retainer is not easier to hold the whole removal partial dentures. That's why we need a supporter in the front, and no supporter is what we call in direct retainer. So you can see when we talk about when the removal partial denture can be rotated, you will need the indirect retainer to prevent that. So what's the ideal indirect retainer locations? So the indirect retainer location should be placed as far as possible from the distal extension base. So you can afford the best possible leverage against the lifting of the distal extension base. So think about that. If you, are, if you place those indirect retainer a little bit close to the focal line, then the force will be larger than 
the lifting force. However, if you put your indoor retainer more far from the fulcrum line, sometimes the force will be much smaller than the lifting force. So when we design it properly, when we place the indoor retainer as far as possible from the distal extension base, eventually you can prevent overloading to the front teeth. So basically, we will draw the imagery of a focal line. Remember, the focal line is from two posterior, most posterior rest. And then we will do a perpendicular line, as you saw the dot line. And when it touch the front tooth, that one will be the ideal position. I remember in the first class, we talked about what's a function or what could be acted as an indoor retainer. Remember, the seesaw in the front need a support, and we only have a supporter, could be the rest. So only the rest can be an indirect retainer. And when we talk about the anterior teeth, actually we're much likely to have a canine, as our abdomen tooth to be an indirect retainer because he will have a longest root in the mouth. Sometimes maybe the canine is not existing or the canine have some periodontal issue is not good enough to provide the support, then we might want to select the premolar. However, the central and lateral incisor is the best options. If you can prevent, you will not like to put indirect retainer on a central or lateral incisor, if possible. After discussing why the focal line is so important and how it affects the indoor retainer location, let's talk about the other interesting topic, is where we can put the rest position. Should we put on the mesial or distal? So, when we have a distal extension based remote part interest, we know the posterior is supported by the soft tissue because the soft tissue is more mobile than the tooth, so this remove part dentures actually could rotate it. When this remove part denture rotated, if we put the rest on the distal, it actually provides a class 1 leverage relationship, and it will cause the harmful force to the bottom and tooth. The reason is because the class 1 leverage Actually, you can see on the pictures. So the clasp is actually moved not just only forward, also upward. So when the clasp moves upward, it will contact the tooth more than before. So you will provide more talking forces to the tooth, which is not ideal for the bottom tooth. So how can we prevent that? That's why we can put the rest position to the mesial. So we can change the focal line. We can also change the different class of leverage. So when we move the, the rest to the mesial, then you can see the movement will become more horizontally, not vertically. So you, the clasp will not provide the torquing force to the tooth. However, except just only change the rest positions. The, the other most important factors actually is the tissue support of the extension space. If you have a good tissue support on the extension space, actually it, was, it could be reduced the lever actions of the clasp arm. So in the last, let's talk about the other interesting topic. So when we design the rear retainers on the distal extension removable partial dentures, should we choose the bar type or the class type? So the simple answer is the bar type. The bar type is more preferable than the class type. Why it happens? Look at the pictures. So when we have a distal extension removal partial dentures, we know the distal side will rotate it. So when it rotated, 
then the clasp actually is moved forward, and sometimes even move upward. However, if we, as we just discussed, if we we put the mesial rest, then the movement will be more forward. However, look at the pictures. Even if move forward, the clasp design, the circumferential clasp design, will also have some part will engage into the undercut and touch the tooth. So you still provide some minor talking forces, just not so severe as the distal rest seat design. However, if we do a eye bar, when the eye bar move forward, it is still, it was all under the survey line. It's all under the undercut, so it will not really touch the tooth. So that's why the bar type is more favorable when we design a clasp. In the distal extensions, removable partial dentures. However, in some conditions, we are not able to design eye bar. Then we have to use the bar type design. And when we design that, then we should use a tapered roll wire design to replace the casting circumferential clasp design, so we can provide less force. To the tooth, and we will discuss how you can determine if you can put the eye bar or if you couldn't put the eye bars. Those details will be discussed in the direct retainer topic.